What is happening guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl Wi-Fi battle. It still feels weird for me to do these intros. Just because it's been seriously so long since we've had Wi-Fi battles on the channel, but boy does it feel good to be back. So I found this opponent from Twitter. A lot of the time I will post when I'm looking for Wi-Fi battles. If you guys have competitive teams and are looking to get some battles in, go ahead and follow me on Twitter. The link will be in the description. But uh, I'm using the same team as I was in the previous video. I have to get some more use out of these guys. Um, and plus, it's a really fun team. I have a lot of fun with this uh, kind of hyper offense stuff. So, uh, yeah, my opponent is rocking a pretty a pretty interesting team as well. He has a Dragonite. I notice he's also working with an Alakazam, uh, a couple of very scary Pokemon. And the main thing that I am afraid of is probably going to be that Feraligatr. Um, it definitely, if it has the ability to set up, it can do a lot of work to my team. So, got to try to work around that thing. But overall, a uh, pretty scary team he's got there. I see the Heatran. I'm actually expecting. Uh, either a Nido King or a Heatran lead. Regardless, I'm gonna go ahead and just start off with the boy Hand D Job, the Ambipom. Ambipom is an absolute threat, and I will not be told otherwise. Uh, he does end up leading off with the Nido King, as I throw out the old Monkey. Um, so I'm thinking this is a nice opportunity for me to just go for a, a nice little fake out, get some get some solid damage with that Silk Scarf uh, and maxed out attack on this thing. I'm actually able to do. A pretty solid chunk to pretty much everything with fake out. So I, I knock this thing to nearly half. And if it's a lead Nido King, I'm imagining he's likely just gonna go right for the stealth rock here. Um, so that's what I'm going to expect as I'm gonna go ahead and pivot here, get a U-turn, knock this thing to half, and then I have to decide what I kind of want to get in here. I have a couple different options uh, against Nido King. So save the monkey for later, that thing will definitely come in handy as uh, you've seen in the past but I can either go into Alakazam here I, I, I KO that thing with a psychic but I opt to go for the Rampardos uh, the reason being is that he doesn't have any hard switches into an earthquake plus um, it's nice to get this thing in before stealth rock which doesn't really matter too much but I'm gonna have to be playing around stealth rock as I don't have uh, any hazard control on this team like rapid spin or defog or anything like that but not too big of a deal. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and click Earthquake. I'm kind of weighing my options here. He doesn't have a great switch in to an Earthquake here. So uh, he actually decides to stay in. Choice Scarf for Ampardos is able to outspeed. And down goes the Nido King. So that's a pretty pretty hefty attacker I'm able to take care of early, which is great. Um, I don't blame him for staying in there because switching into an Earthquake from Rampardos, uh, there's not a whole lot that, that, that could have taken that. So now he gets a free switch into whatever he wants. I've been feeling really good about getting rid of that uh, that Nido King early. I do not want to lose Rampardos, who actually looks super useful against things like his uh, Heatran. So, um, I'm debating whether or not I want to stay in, because I'm thinking Alakazam probably can't Okomi. He's likely maybe just going to go for an Energy Ball. Uh, that's exactly what I was expecting. So, I'm thinking, who can I switch into here? Um, if he decides to just go for the Psychic, it's going to hurt. But I'm going to go into PD. I think Rampardos is probably just too useful for me at this point, so I do not want to lose that fella. And I bring out the boy, the absolute legend, the destroyer, the Carnivine, as he goes for a Focus Blast, which is actually uh, not what I was expecting, and that is going to do a whole lot of damage to my boy Pete. Uh, it knocks me down to my Citrus Berry, but judging off of that damage, I'm thinking this thing is likely going to be Choice Specs. Um, I get that Citrus Berry, I decide if he Specs, he's going to be forced to go for... Uh, a Focus Blast again, um, and if he's not, I'll be able to kind of see what kind of set this thing's working with. He does go for the Focus Blast again. That is a dead giveaway that this thing is Choice Specs because nobody in their right mind would click Focus Blast right there just, when Psychic kills. So, unfortunately, he hits two Focus Blasts in a row, which is like, this This man's got to go out and buy a fucking lotto ticket or something because ain't nobody ever hit two in a row, and that really sucks. But So, Carnivine goes down again without having done anything, and you just you just hate to see it. While PD is lost but not forgotten, this does actually provide me a pretty solid opportunity just to switch into Dragonite. Knowing that he is choiced into Focus Blast, he definitely is going to want to switch out. And that allows me to get a free Dragon Dance. So, he brings out his Dragonite. His is looking different. It must be sick or something. I'm not really sure. Uh, but we've got the Spider-Man meme going on. And a uh, little little ditto matchup here. So, this is, this is not a great matchup, but I do get a little bit of the upper hand here. As, obviously, I have the speed and attack boost. Plus, I ate some of them leftovers, but that, st that, that Stealth Rock damage is uh, pretty painful. Um, so I'm just going to go right for a Dragon Claw here. There's no really point in wasting uh, this setup on Dragonite. Plus, his Dragonite, to me, is a very large threat. I know that I definitely need to get some damage off on it before I'm able to take it out with, like, Alakazam. So I go for the Dragon Claw there. I do just over half as he goes for the Outrage. Uh, the Outrage isn't a bad play for me, technically, just because now I can kind of... Uh, ensure that I can get the kill on this fella. So I can go either into Rampardos, get some, some Rock Slide action, or I can go into Alakazam. 
Uh, knowing that I am, you know, focus sash, Alakazam is always dedicated as my kind of revenge killer, and that's exactly what happens here, obviously. Uh, my Dragon Claw got this thing into range where my Dazzling Gleam should definitely take care of this guy, so I should be able to finish this matchup with the Focus Sash intact for Alakazam to do some revenge killing and Serial Eaten later. So I take care of that thing with the Dazzling Gleam, Dragonite down. That is, a again, a very large threat out of the way, and I don't have to worry about that, that, uh, that guy anymore. So now he goes into his own Alakazam, and I'm thinking, this guy's copying me, bro. He's just switching in to his own minds that are like mine, and I'm like, what the hell do I even do here? Um, so he brings back out his Zam, and I know that this thing is Specs, I know that it will knock me down to my Sash if uh, he goes for the Shadow Ball here, which gives me an opportunity to just go for a Shadow Ball of my own. Plus, I may even just win the Speed Tie, uh, because I, I, I believe I'm 31 IV in Speed, plus uh, Timid Nature and Maxed Out in Speed. He actually, unfortunately, does go first. He gets off that Shadow Ball, and now I'm able to go for my own. You can tell with his being Choice Specs, uh, it would have knocked me out. My not being Specs would not uh, KO him from full health, so that... Uh, isn't really too big of a deal, because now that I know he has Choice Specs, uh, I can kind of play around that and go right into the boy Hand D. So I switch into this thing, uh, knowing that the safest play for him is just to go for uh, that Shadow Ball again. Regardless, even if he did switch, I could just fake out and U-turn something. So Ambipom was the obvious play here. I bring in the boy who's got Udders for fingers, and he does just go right for the Shadow Ball. Now, I have uh, a couple options here. I can go for the fake out if he decides to stay in on the Zam. Uh, that thing will die. Or, I click U-turn predicting a switch. I know that he knows his his Alakazam uh, is too valuable for this matchup. So I just go right for the U-turn expecting him to switch. As he does bring in the Vile Plume. Another Pokemon that I, I, I used to love to use uh, back in the old days. Wi-Fi battling some, some PU and NU battles. Shout out to those who remember the, uh, the good old NU days. Um, so I get the U-turn off on that thing. This allows me a free switch into whatever I want. I have two good options for this. I have both Alakazam and Infernape. Um, I'm thinking Alakazam is probably the safest option just because I don't take uh, the Stealth Rock damage just because of my ability Magic Guard, which is great, which is what allows this thing to, to wear that Focus Ash so well and be just the, the best damn revenge killer ever. But I go into the Alakazam here, and I'm just going to go right for a Psychic. I don't think he's going to switch. He doesn't really have anything that can come into an Alakazam. Granted, there's not really much in the game that can switch into Alakazam unless you're like a Blissey. Uh, but I, I just have coverage for everything. I've got uh, I've got something for pretty much all of his Pokemon. I'm able to take care of his Vile Plume uh, without dealing with any Sleep Powder or any shenanigans there. And now he brings back in his Alakazam. He saw that his outsped mine last time, so I'm thinking he knows that he's likely going to be able to outspeed here. I could switch into uh, the Monkey again, but he's definitely not going to go for the Shadow Ball. He'll just finish me off, knowing I'm at one health with the Psychic. He does win the Speed Tie yet again, so that is. Quite unlucky for old Serial Killer over here. I do go down to that. Serial Killer going down there isn't the end of the world. I kind of did some things that I needed to do with it. I would have preferred to kept it around a little longer, but that's fine. Because you know why? I got the Ambipom in the back pocket, boy. The secret weapon. You want to know how you beat fast mons? Just bring an Ambipom. Fake out is the goat. So, um, knowing that this thing goes down to a fake out, I'm thinking, do I click that and go for the obvious play? If he stays in, I don't think he's going to stay in because he knows that Pimp Slab's coming. Uh, so I just decided to go for a U-turn again. The Ambipom Pivot is coming in clutch. He ends up switching out the Alakazam, because that's pretty much what kills the rest of my team, as long as Ambipom's dead. And he decides to switch into the Heatran here. Now that is a big old scary Lava Frog, and Ambipom wants nothing to do with that. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the U-turn, get the Great Pivot. This allows me to now get a matchup. Um, I either have Infernape for the close combat, I also have the Rampardos. I've been keeping the Rampardos uh, kind of in the back healthy, just because I know that... An Earthquake will obviously take care of the Heatran. I'll be able to outspeed. I'm thinking, do I go Infernape? Do I go Rampardos? I'm going to end up going Rampardos. I know that my win condition is if I can maintain the Ambipom when uh, I, I can keep that fake out for his Alakazam later. So that's kind of how I have to win this. Uh, I decide to go ahead and give this thing some good head. I don't even head smash it, but Earthquake rather. Um, I'm also able to see that this is Leftovers Heatran, so don't have to worry about any shenanigans there. I'm just going to go right for an Earthquake. Looking at his team, all he has left is that Alakazam, he's got the Heatran, and he has the Feraligator in the back. So I just go for the Earthquake, that will take care of old four times weak Steel Fire ass, and he he's now dead. So Heatran was a big threat to me, and now it is gone, that is amazing, Rampardo's doing kind of exactly what it needed to do, and now he opts to go into the Feraligator. So this is where the game could potentially be lost here. Uh, if this thing goes for a Dragon Dance and sets up, it could be... It could be over for me, but it would allow me to at least get some damage with an Earthquake, and then I have Ambipom in the back. But I just go for the Earthquake here, 
Uh, it actually does put this thing into range where the fake out would kill it because I do get a critical hit, which is scary. Uh, but he ends up going right for the waterfall and that is going to take care of Rampardos. But like I said, did what the boy needed to do. And now that I've seen that this thing is just going to be uh, life orb, he went for the waterfall. I could now just go right into hand D, hit him with a fake out, knock that thing out. Fake out is the goat. I'm telling you, Ambipom is slept on and I will not stand for it any longer. <laughs> All of this damage I've taken is from Stealth Rock, just switching in and out, which is amazing. You always got to have a good pivot, you know? Uh, but I go for the fake out here. He really has nothing he could do. He could switch into the Alakazam. Uh, but that thing would just die. He lets the Feraligator go down. That Earthquake damage was great. Very glad I was running uh, Choice Scarf on the Rampardos there. Allowed me to outspeed. Now he goes into the Alakazam. Of course, I can't go for the Fake Out here, um, obviously. So I have to switch. I just go right into Infernape. He's going to end up going for, um, I think, a Psychic just to knock me out. But as long as I have Ambipom to come right back in for a Fake Out, we should be money. So um, in comes Mixtape. Ready to spit some hot fire, and he actually ends up getting focus blasted. This man hit three for three focus blasts. It's never been done. <laughs> Alright, and that takes care of Infernape. So this, this battle came down uh, to the very last Pokemon, but the monkey's going to come out on top as I go right back into hand D. And uh, you cannot outspeed me, bro. I don't care how fast you are. I am a monkey with two hands. My, my tails are arms. I got that fake out. So the fake out is going to take care of the Zam. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be the end of the match there. So hopefully you enjoyed. Uh, I thought this was a really fun one. I enjoy using Ambipom. I feel like he, he definitely makes people angry. And uh, that's what he's supposed to do. <laughs> so Steven, thank you very much for the match. Uh, like I said, follow me on Twitter if you'd like to get some, some, some matches in in the near future. I will be trying to get some new teams built uh, to have some variety for you guys. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button on the video if you enjoyed. And uh, leave me a comment, because I do like to read them all and respond to them. So, thank you guys. Peace out.